Merry Christmas, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Pastor Lori Bayen, and I would like to welcome you to this celebration of Christmas Eve. I want to give you a couple of tips for how you can participate in this worship experience online. If you have an Advent wreath, maybe something like this, or if you have four candles that you've been lighting throughout this, uh, the four Sundays leading up to Christmas, I invite you to get them out and lit. Uh, if you've got a fifth candle, or if you've got just one candle, in a few minutes I'll be inviting you to light that one that represents the light of Christ coming into the darkness of the world. Later on in the worship service, it'll be um, a time when we sing Christ when we sing Silent Night. I'd like you to take another candle and light it from that Christ candle. If you've got other people in the room with you, you might pass that light around and each of you hold a candle. Speaking of Silent Night, we um, will have a lot of Christmas carols during this worship celebration and you're welcome to sing along or to just meditate on the words which will be on the screen. And finally, later on in this hour, there will also be an opportunity to take communion. So I invite you to get a little piece of bread and um, a sip of juice, whatever you've got on hand, don't worry about it being um, a particular kind, just a way that we can um, Remember the last meal that Jesus had with his disciples. I invite you to prepare your heart now for this time of worship. In the weeks leading up to Christmas, we have been hearing the good news from all the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because we have needed good news, and that's what gospel actually means. We have heard stories of courage all along our journey, of people who have sung out songs of hope, love, joy, and peace. Our luminaries have been a witness to the light we believe has come and is coming. And now we return to the story of Jesus' birth as it is told in the Gospel of Luke. This account is the narrative we read again and again for this author gives us the most beloved detail. We yearn to see the scene play out, to hear the music of the angels, to feel the rush to the manger, to see what this star that pierces the night sky has come to proclaim. We so desire to believe the good news of the messengers that is the culmination of humanity's pain of birth. Don't be afraid, for unto us a sign has come that will be to all people on earth. Peace. I believe in the sun. I believe in the sun. Even when, even when it's not shining. Over the last four weeks, our theme song has helped us remember that we can believe that God is with us, even and especially in the midst of hard times. Even when the sun is hidden from sight. Even, even when, when the, the sun, sun is, is hidden, hidden from, from sight. sight. Even when love feels so remote. Even, even when, when love feels, feels so remote. remote. Even when God is silent. Even, even when, when God, God is silent. silent. Even then, even, even then, then, we believe, we believe, we believe in the presence of Emmanuel, God with us. This is the night we celebrate that the Holy came in human form to be light in our lives, to speak to us, touch us, comfort us, and call us.
Holy One, we thank you for the glimpse of heaven on earth in the faces and the light of those around us. Even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when our view is obscured by clouds of doubt, you have ignited the flame of hope, love, joy, and peace within us. Let, Let us glow, glow with its brilliance from, from the inside, inside out. out. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 52, 7 through 10. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of a messenger who proclaims peace, who brings good news, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God rules. Listen, your lookouts lift their voice. They sing out together. Right before their eyes, they see the Lord returning to Zion. 
Break into song together, you ruins of Jerusalem. The Lord has comforted his people and has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in view of all the nations, of all the ends of the earth have seen our God's victory. For all of Advent, we have called on the power of music that inspires those who hear it to a brighter tomorrow. It has been a difficult time in this pandemic for singing to be restricted. In its absence, we have been reminded just how important it is to sing together. Indeed, music has often been the soundtrack of hope. We enjoyed a season of music appreciation as well as reflection on the power of music. We watched documentaries that told courageous stories of people singing as witness to light in the midst of poverty, death camps, protests, disasters, and the oppressive bonds of enslavement. We've also been presented with carols of resistance that have been sung as commentary on injustice. Tonight we bring you another. It is a song you will no doubt have heard on other Christmas Eve nights, but this time, listen with a new appreciation. Written in France by Placide Capot, with melody by Adolphe Adams, the song was banned from church services when Capot's theology was deemed heretical, some called him an atheist, and Adams' music was labeled as Jewish the ultimate insult in Christian circles at a time when Gregorian chant was having a resurgence. Further, the song's message of humility and shared humanity went against the late 19th century idea that slaves did not have souls. Even though the church in France tried to kill the song, the American abolitionist and Unitarian minister John Sullivan Dwight made it popular in the Civil War era with its third verse proclaiming a radical message. Truly, he taught us to love one another. His law is love, and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Someday we will once again be able to join our full voices in song in our sanctuary. We will sing as never before, for now, we allow this song to be a prayer of hope that we will destroy the inequity that still haunts us.
shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease sweet hymns of joy and grateful chorus raise Luke 2, 1 through 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. The first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in the marriage and was pregnant.
While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the guest room. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them, the Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, Don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful news, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in the David city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. They said, Glory to God in heaven and on earth peace among those with whom he favors.
When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what they had been told about the child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at the shepherds, what the shepherds told them.
Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told. Our God, Song of the Ages, be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to raise our voices with you, tuning ourselves to you, Creator of heaven and earth. You filled the night of creation with music and light, setting in motion the rhythms of sunrise and sunset, of sound and silence. You formed within us your love song and breathed into us the breath of life. Sometimes our voices are choked off and we cannot find your melody. 
but you keep the bass line humming, waiting for us to rejoin the chorus. You show up in the worst of times, offering us the way to freedom in you. Your voice breaks through in prophets whose songs wake us up to the kingdom you desire. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Breaking forth into light from the blessed darkness of a womb, he brought light that illumined a path so that we could see our way to more beloved community. Your Spirit anointed him to raise his voice, to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners, and invited us to do this too. Born into a world of suffering, he suffered. Born into a world of senseless death, he died. Born into a world that needed hope, he rose, delivering us and proclaiming light and life, the triumphal coda of life song. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit, holy luminary, lighting our way. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. For deeper love we spread the bread. I won't be full till all are fed. Till every soul has hope. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink of this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For deeper love we share the wine, I cannot take the love divine till every soul has walked the line and you've had yours like I've had mine and so in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here virtually and on these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine. Make them be for us your love and light so that our hearts may be broken open for the world and our lives poured out in service. No one is safe till all are healed as Jesus on the mount revealed your life and mine forever sealed just like the lilies of the field 
By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Mix our voices in harmony with each other until we sit at the same table and sing in the same choir in your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. We follow where the Christ has led to take And now with the confidence of knowing that we are children of God, let us be so bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You're invited to share in the feast at this time. We come to the classic moment of every Christmas Eve the moment to light our candles and sing Silent Night. We have wondered this year how we could possibly recreate a sense of normalcy in this moment. We wondered how we could get through it with the joy we usually feel on this night, having lost so much this year. No, it is not the same. And we know that because of the people we have lost, the jobs and security we have lost, that it will likely not ever be the same. Surely every year we will remember this moment when we thought perhaps light and song would elude us. But here we are. We will light our lights and we will have our song. Just like those soldiers in World War I sang across enemy lines, everything stopped for a short while as the message that all is calm and bright prevailed above the violence and dark night of the world. We have been sorely divided on many things. We are devastated by our losses. We are tired, and we are not so calm. But for this moment, this night, let us remember that we are not alone, and that we believe that the music and light of God's promises come again and again. Hope for a better tomorrow, love that works for a more equitable world, joy that wells from a place deep within us, and peace that offers us the assurance we need.
I invite you to raise your candle high for the benediction. We wait for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. And so, my friends, like bells ringing out the news that Christ is born among us, fill the night left by sadness with messages of hope, love, joy, and peace. Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep that light alive in you and that spur you on in your work of justice and reconciliation. Raise your voices and repeat after me. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Amen.